How do I sit in this? Hey guys, what's up? No, no, we're not gonna do that. That's weird. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. I'm Miley. So if you're new to my channel, you will not notice, but if you aren't new to my channel, you will notice I'm in a new space. So my husband and I bought a house and although I really want to just dive right into doing videos on interior design, painting, decorating, DIYs, I can't do that yet because I have something I need to get done. I feel like I am turning this channel into what does Miley need to do today? And the thing I need to do today, I am currently sitting on. I need to reupholster this chair. Yeah. So I have done a few reupholstery projects on my own for funsies. And my friend reached out to me to reupholster this chair she has. And of course, I said yes. Because you can't say no to a friend when she asks you to reupholster her chair. Just like you can't say no to her when she asks you to watch her cat at the same time. Oh, you smell like tuna. So I'm going to move this into my new studio space and get started. Okay, let's start off by going over this chair. From far away, it doesn't look that bad, but when you look a little closer, you're gonna start to notice some stuff. My friend told me a while back she did a very quick reupholstery job of this chair. So looking closer, I noticed some leather strips that were hot glued on, and I'm guessing this was to cover up some staples. And this back pillow is close in color, but it is a different fabric than the rest of the chair and both cushions do have some stains on them and if you lift up this back pillow there are visible staples the seat cushion well there's this it's just hand sewn on the back of the chair is a totally different fabric and this is the fabric I picked out that was approved by my friend for reupholstering. So it's not much of a color change but it is a nice upholstery fabric so I think it will definitely give this chair a nice glow up. When it comes to reupholstering, my least favorite part is taking off the fabric. It's honestly very messy and a little gross. Especially with an old chair, removing the original fabric, there's all kinds of dust and smells that come up and hit you right in the face. But this chair wasn't too bad because most of the original fabric had already been removed, but as you watch this, there's visible dust just coming off of it. And the other reason I don't like this part is because it is hard work. You are like ripping and prying fabric and staples that have been in a piece of furniture for years. And by the time I am done with this part, I am usually very sweaty and feel like I got a full body workout. I will add with a more complicated chair, like a wing back chair, I will make a list of the order I take all the pieces off in so that when I start to reupholster I can reverse that list, but with this chair it was only three pieces so I didn't need to do that. Once I got done removing all the fabric from the body of the chair, removing this fabric from the cushion was obviously very easy and a nice cool down from the workout I just had. This large pillow is just from Ikea and has a cover on it, so again, another nice easy step. There she is. Doesn't she look beautiful? And this. This is a very important step. The first step I did to reupholstering the chair, I made all of the cording. Cording is that nice piped edge you see on chairs, pillows, cushions. I started off by cutting a bunch of long two inch strips of fabric. You fold the strip in half, place the cotton cording in the fold, and sew away. Then once all that cording was done, I started to staple some of it along the bottom edge of the chair. Now 
came the fun part of having to figure out what the heck I had to do for this bottom piece. Usually I am able to go off of the piece I took off and use that as a template, but in this case, I couldn't do that. I cut a large square piece and stapled that along the bottom edge of the chair. And then when I flipped the fabric up, I just measured and made sure that I was getting the measurements just right for the cuts I was making to work around the legs. For the side part of the bottom piece to get a nice finished edge where no staples are showing, I used this metal strip with hooks and I'm guessing this thing has a name. Do I know it? No, I do not. This metal strip makes it really nice to get an easy finished edge. There are little hooks in the metal strip that after cutting off the excess fabric, when you flip it down, it creates a nice secure staple free edge. This is why my friend hot glued leather at the bottom. She didn't have this piece. So she just had to staple the fabric down and then to cover up the staples, she hot glued that leather to cover them up. Before I finish off the bottom piece, I moved on to the top piece and this was definitely way easier to figure out than the bottom piece. One, cutting the fabric was not as hard to figure out exactly how I needed to cut it to make everything lay nice. And the other reason this was way easier is because all of the fabric gets pulled and stapled in the back, so I didn't have to struggle through using those metal strips and having a visible finished edge because once this back piece is on, all of this is going to get covered up. up the back I started off by stapling cording along the back and side edges. Figuring out the pattern for closing up the back was super easy, even easier than the front back piece. This chair is very square and there's no weird curves or anything, so the back piece was basically just a giant rectangle. I did start by stapling the back piece down, but then I realized I needed to put down some batting first. Batting is a fluffy cotton material. I believe it's used in quilting a lot, but the batting helps the top fabric from sinking into the back. And I had to use those metal strip things again on each side of the back. If you can't tell, I don't like using these metal strips for a few reasons. The first reason is a tool issue. I don't have a pneumatic staple gun, and I think having a pneumatic staple gun with the air pressure would help me get the staples in just the right place that I am not able to get with the staple gun I currently have. But besides the tool issue, I'm still getting the hang of using these metal strips, and I really struggle to get a perfect finished edge. That's why I'm a big fan of cording, because I think it helps cover up the issues that I have using these strips trips. Now that the hard work was done, all I had to do was get through some sewing. This is originally how I got into reupholstering. I already knew how to sew and work with fabric, and I thought reupholstering would also be cool to know how to do. I also thought it would be fun and a nice leisurely activity to do on the side, but boy was I wrong. It is so hard. I think I also thought it would be easy because I already had done some simple projects before tackling a bigger project, but now I tell people there's reupholstering dining room chairs and there's actual reupholstering. Okay, let me quickly talk about what I am doing right now. I cut out the top and bottom piece of the seat cushion with a one inch seam allowance, and then on the seam line, I pinned and sewed cording around the whole edge. <gasps> And 
after sewing up the top and bottom pieces with cording, I cut out three pieces for the front and sides of the cushion cover to connect the top and bottom piece together. <gasps> Oh wow, the cushion cover is all done. Okay, not yet. She's still a little lacking in the back end. So I had ordered a variety pack of zippers for this project and future other projects, but the zippers ended up not being long enough, so I did a double zipper in the back. For this last part, it was by far the easiest part and it was even easier because I could use the previous pillow cover as a template. And also making a simple pillow cover takes no time at all. This was just two big squares sewn together on three sides. And then on the fourth side, I sewed in a zipper. <laughs> And once I put the pillow in the cover and put it on the chair, I didn't really like the way it looked. It looked kind of frumpy to me and I think it needed a more polished look. So to give it a more polished look, I did a half an inch sewed line around the edge of the pillow cover. <laughs> And here is the before, and now we have the after. Doesn't this little lady look a whole lot better? There's definitely things that I wish I did a little bit better with my reupholstering, and I'm hoping to get better at in the future, but some of my favorite parts are the cording. I think it's a really nice polished detail that was added. And secondly, my favorite thing is the texture in this fabric. Although this chair is old and there's some nicks and scratches, it is a solidly built piece of furniture with really cool detailing, and I think the fabric really highlights the quality of this chair. If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more DIYs by me, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button so that you know when I post, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!